today we're going to look at the Sharp MZ700 again, not the machine itself. We're going to have a look at a new peripheral for this machine which makes it more usable today and it's just been launched or recently launched and it's something that I thought that you know if you've got one of these machines it'd be nice to have a look at and maybe preserve your so your cassette software and use a more modern interface to load and save your programs so let's have a quick look at it so if you saw the other video on the shop you will have noticed that it has a built-in cassette port or cassette drive on this machine and um, it's quite good it's nice to have it means there's no extra wires trailing about and it's reasonably reliable and it does load manufacturers or produced commercially produced software and it loads it very well with very few errors or very few failures but it's not the best system really in modern times so we're going to replace it with this and this There's a modern version of a cassette deck using an SD card in here, micro SD card. And as you can see, it's quite a chunky bit of electronics to make it work. It's in a 3D printed case, which isn't bad. I mean, it's, you know, it's quite tactile and it has a little screen to show you which program you're going to load on it and which bit of software you want to use on the back it doesn't have a lot of two screw holes for mounting it and it also has a jack which you plug into your machine to allow you to actually load the software so let's have a look at how it fits in the machine now the first thing you do if you haven't already done so is take two screws out the back and then you slide the cassette unit off and you lift it out of the way. Then you just disconnect this ribbon cable. Be very careful that you don't pull out the wires. Okay, once you've done that, you then install the new unit in a very similar way it has a very similar connector on it's marked to go towards the back of the port so you can't get the orientation of the pins the wrong way around so once you've plugged this in there's not a lot to it so be very careful as you plug it in Okay, once you've done that, you can just tidy the cable away and then drop in your unit into the machine. Yeah, I'm not going to screw it in because I don't really want to keep the um, this on permanently because I'm going to put the cassette deck back on for some of my tape software. But once you've done that, you switch the machine on and you don't see an awful lot of difference okay so you actually see a little monitor in the window there so we're going to have a, a little bit of a look at it and as you can see it's just giving you some information for the volume on the machine itself okay so if i skip up and down on these arrows you then get your track list or your program list and you can just select what you want to install. And as I said, this is quite a loaded card that came with it, which is what I, the option I asked for. But you can drop your own programs onto it via a PC, and they're all WAV files, so it's quite easy to get hold of. You can download them on a lot of the MZ websites. 
Yeah, so you just go through it. And the biggest thing in this, you've got basic, which is good because my copy of basic is a bit flaky on cassette and it's nice to have a copy on file. So once you've chosen your program, you then load it in any other way. Okay, the same way as you would do on any other cassette. Before you do that, you also need an addition of a mono audio lead, which you have to plug in and then plug in to the back of the machine for reading. Okay, so it it virtually uses the cassette port on the back of the machine to send the data to it from this new SD card reader. Once you're ready, it's just usually the same. Just press load. It'll say press play on here and then press play and let the machine load in the game as normal. And there you can see it just loads in the game. We'll come back to it once it's loaded in. Okay, unfortunately, I didn't try that game out before I loaded it. And basically, it doesn't run very well. So we'll try a different one. Okay, doing the same. It's no different. So we're going to load. Um, press play and get that um, game loaded into it. This time it's Donkey Gorilla. Whatever that is. I've never seen that before. Let's have a look. And there we go. We have Donkey Gorilla running. Oh. It's just basically a character driven Donkey Kong. Which is <laughs> interesting. I'll just turn the sound off because it can be a bit annoying on a single channel. But basically that's it. It does um, loads quite well. And as I said, it's kind of very, very... Petsky, Petaski, ZX81 character style graphics, which are fine. The game's quick enough. The one thing that you did notice about these machines is that because of the limited graphics and the limited movement, it actually runs really, really fast. The games themselves do run very, very quickly. You know, they are very playable games on this machine. Be nice to see if this Z80 compatible in brackets on this machine is actually faster than a standard Z80. Um, that's something I might look into a little bit later because it does appear to be that way just by, you know, ob observing the games that run on it. But. We're not really here to look at the games themselves, okay? This um, SD card version of a tape deck emulator for this machine is actually quite neat. You see the colour difference is slightly out, which, you know, to be fair, the, uh, the, the person who built these um, stated that anyway. And uh, to be completely honest, if you did it in white or cream, it wouldn't really matter. You know, because every other SD emulator that you find doesn't actually particularly match the machine it's actually being used on anyway. So, you know, if you'd done that cream or white or black, it wouldn't have made a lot of difference. What is quite nice is that it runs really well. It's quite reliable. Um, you can get the WAV files transferred basically from your home PC very easily done and it generally works as long as the, the the files work and the files work properly this will work properly and it runs at a similar speed to a cassette because it's using the same frequencies to chuck the data down which is uh, no which is what you would expect from a tape emulator and um I actually think it's quite a nice bit of kit. And if you look at it, the small details are quite nice. You've got the printed parts of the keys, which are fairly good, to be honest, especially for 3D printing. And they've even got the little 
sharp logo which is replicated across the machine which I'll show you a little bit closer now okay. so as you can see the logo on the machine if I scan down is there okay guessing it's meant to be a Viking longboat or something similar because it's actually on the machine there as well it's very faint and originally when I first saw it I thought it was a mark until I actually looked closer at it it's tiny so they've done quite a neat job of replicating it on this you know this machine especially for 3d printed as you can see it's not a bad little unit so what do I think of this um, I actually think it's quite good I mean it's um, very ingenious the way it was done it was very well thought out it comes in a fully built kit which includes the the 3d printed case all of the electronics inside the only thing it doesn't um, come with is your audio lead but you know they're easy enough to get um, you can also order it with a, an SD card it was a 4 gig SD card as advertised this one came with an 8 gig one so I guess kind of it's depends on the size you can get hold of at the time or the person or the manufacturer can get hold of at the time and um, it comes with quite a lot of games and bits of software on board and the fact that it comes with basic is to me that that's a bonus that's well worth buying this for it's you can drop your own software on it you can you know convert your cassettes to WAV files and so on or download them and just drop them straight onto this SD card in here and it worked quite well the color difference to me doesn't really make a lot of difference it's not a, a deal breaker on the machine itself um, whether if it was solid black or white or cream wouldn't have made any real difference at all um, and you can buy it in a kit form you can buy just the electronics uh, and put it together yourself already built without the 3d printed case so you can mount it somewhere else inside the machine um, which to me is not not a bad thing because not every machine comes with the cassette deck which is you know here um, a lot of them come with a, a blank there so you know if you had some way of mounting this in the original blank then that would be just as good so there are a number of options to make this work and I think it's a nice piece of kit and it's a great addition to a machine that's not as well supported as all of the others out there because you know it's it was expensive and it was seen more as a a business machine even though it wasn't really aimed at that it was seen it was seen as a productivity machine where it was aimed for education and entertainment which is exactly what the manual was predicting so this is a fantastic addition well worth getting uh, I'll put a link at the bottom of who makes it and so on and um, I hope that um, you know you'll buy one of these if you have one of these machines and you know keep your machine a bit more active because you don't have to fumble around for cassette tapes which are getting unreliable now so all in all well worth it so I hope you enjoyed this um, episode in which it looks into a brand new peripheral for a sharp MZ 700 and I hope you subscribe I hope you liked what you've seen and we'll do a lot more in the coming months okay so thanks for watching thanks for listening thanks goodbye